So the United Nations has called for the immediate release of British businessman Ryan Cornelius, who has been imprisoned in Dubai since 2008. He was initially sentenced to 10 years for fraud. However, after serving his, his time, he was then given another 20-year stretch. And both the family and members of both Houses of Parliament have been calling for the government to do more to intervene. Well, I'm very pleased to say I've now been joined by the Lib Dem peer, Lord Clement Jones, who has personally asked the Foreign Secretary uh, to help. And uh, I've seen a copy of the letter, um, uh, Lord Clement Jones, which he sent uh, to the Secretary of State. But before we talk about that, could you perhaps tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about the background of this case? Well, the background is that um, the indirectly uh, Ron Cornelius uh, businessman uh, had, a, had a loan from the uh, Dubai Islamic Bank, and that was covered by a personal guarantee uh, uh, and quite a large number of assets. Uh, a development in Dubai in particular worth something of the order of a billion dollars, and the loan was for about $500 million. Um, and uh, what happened is that fraudulently, effectively, uh, the D chairman of the Dubai Islamic Bank uh, arranged for uh, uh, Ryan to be arrested, uh, charged uh, in Arabic in a language he doesn't understand. Uh, uh, a court gave judgment um, uh, that he should be imprisoned for 10 years. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then a further 20 years was added at the end of the original 10-year sentence. And uh, uh, in fact, the Dubai Islamic Bank has had uh, uh, complete control of this asset worth a billion pounds, uh, a billion dollars. So uh, there is no way that there has been any detriment um, to the bank at all. So it's completely trumped up. Um, he's been extremely poorly treated. He hasn't, uh, it, it took 18 months for him, for instance, to have treatment for uh, TB in jail. Uh, uh, they have to pay for everything, even, you know, everything, phone charges, soap, razors, you know, this is uh, a terrible regime that he's been subjected to. And uh, uh, basically, he's being kept uh, in jail at the behest of the ruler of the Dubai uh, uh, rulers, uh, uh, the, the director of the Dubai rulers court, uh, Mohammed Al Shaibani. And I raised this uh, exactly a year ago in the House of Lords, uh, subject, of course, to privilege, um, uh, because the whole case is a, a, a totally corrupt, trumped up. Uh, set of circumstances, um, and he is the victim. And I've been pressing uh, the Foreign uh, Common uh, and Develop the Commonwealth and Development Office and successive ministers since 2014 to do something about this. And I'm afraid to say uh, that they haven't. Uh, uh, we, the fact. My goodness, I think we've lost. Uh, Lord Clement Jones, which is really unfortunate. I hope we can get him uh, back again because this is a very important case and uh, I, uh, I really felt strongly that we needed to uh, discuss this today. Emma, you've been looking at this case as well. This is really shocking stuff, isn't it? I'm really glad you guys have brought this up. I've yeah. not heard of it. I've not read about it. I didn't know anything about this. This is a man in his late 60s. Yeah. His health is deteriorating. We've heard about TB, but COVID, other things. And it's really frightening, Arlene, to think that one could be stranded abroad for whatever reason. Yeah. And it sounds like he's done absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah. I don't know the ins and outs of it. But one could be stranded abroad somewhere like Dubai and absolutely receive no help from the Foreign Office, from the FCDO or the UK government. And the family, as they say, they've been campaigning for 15 years. His wife says that, you know, all our pleas to the FCDO have been ignored. Well, I, that's what shocks me the most, because, I mean, obviously, different countries have different rules, yeah. and we know that the Middle East have a, a very different legal system to what we have. But do you expect the UK Consul General or the UK Ambassador to be able to sort things out and to get you out of uh, prison if you've been unlawfully but, held? But yet... This man has been kept in prison for 15 years. And it sounds as though the foreign, you know, that no one really has been attending to the family's pleas, that no one really has given it much attention. I think uh, Lord Clement Jones is back with us again. I hope he is. Good, great. Uh, I just wanted to move on, and thank you for explaining the background to the case so clearly uh, for us. But the most recent correspondence you've had with um, Liz Truss has again 
uh, taken it a step further because the United Nations have now come into the case and have said that Ryan's detention is illegal, arbitrary and dangerous. Have you had any response to that letter? Uh, well, uh, we sent her the letter, as, as uh, you say, Arlene. We got a letter back on the 21st of June, um, but it's incredibly wishy-washy. And in fact, it's another brush off. Uh, by the FCDO. I, I mean, it's full of language like monitoring, considering, reviewing, um, but no action at all. I mean, what needs to happen is uh, very strong representations uh, need to be made to the UAE, and what's more, Magnitsky sanctions need to be imposed on Mohammed al Shabani, and there appears to be no signs of that. Uh, it's all uh, uh, being considered, but there's no action as far as we can see. And let me tell you, I've been in correspondence with successive ministers since 2014, and the tone of the current letter uh, is no different from the, from the previous letters. I almost think that it has been drafted by an official, um, <laughs> if I may be so bold. Uh, but, but let me say this. Uh, I mean, this is a very important case because I've just been reading about why the Majinsky um, legislation came into force uh, and the fact that it came as a result of Sergei Majinsky being murdered in Russia. And that was the whole uh, um, impetus behind that legislation coming into place. I mean, that legislation is now on the statute book in the UK. You're, of course, calling for rights and to be released immediately and uh, without any charges. But you also want the government to take action, don't you, in relation to the, the assets of, of this individual who's behind all of this? 100%. And, you know, we have wonderful support from Bill Browder, who really was the architect for Magnitsky sanctions. Um, and, you know, right from the beginning, he felt that this fell full square within the terms of Magnitsky, uh, and therefore we uh, uh, arranged to uh, make a, uh, uh, an appeal to the Foreign Office to impose these sanctions. And it's since February, we've heard nothing, basically. Um, uh, we've heard uh, very little on the UN uh, determination, um, but this seems to be standard FCDO procedure. Um, so, you know, really what we're uh, trying to do is put more and more pressure on, on the FCDO to actually do something. And, of course, occasionally they do, uh, with Matthew Hedges, um, uh, who was accused of spying in the UAE. Um, uh, they, they did a little bit more. Um, and, of course, with Nazanin Zahari Radcliffe, uh, uh, they managed to do a bit more, although it took them an awful long time. Um, to pull their finger out. So uh, there's a, there's, there's, there are things they could do if only they had the political will to do so. Other countries do this, America, France, Germany, uh, and it seems Australia. Um, but it seems that our foreign office are peculiarly weak in this department. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show today, and we're going to revisit this again. I want to give you that assurance, because uh, I think this is really important. This is an, an ill man. Even if he wasn't ill, it would still be a, a real injustice. But the fact that he is so ill in, in a prison in the way that he is, really, we need to keep the pressure on. So thank you, Lord Clement Jones, for joining me uh, this afternoon. And we asked the Foreign Office for a comment on the matter, and they said to us, we have provided support to a British man detained in the UAE and will continue to do so. We have been in close contact with the UAE authorities to ensure that the welfare of all British people in UAE prisons is met. A bit wishy-washy, as I think you will agree.